Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. So this is going to be part two of uh, Trumpeter's LCM-3. This is the U.S. Navy vehicle landing craft and this is in 172nd scale. And uh, in this video, uh, we're going to be doing all the PE. We're going to knock out all of that photo etch stuff and, uh, and assemble our weapons. We have two 50 caliber machine guns to uh, to assemble, and the shields for those, which are also PE. And we're going to work on our life preservers a little bit, and uh, also <laughs> uh, this vessel did not come with a stand in the kit. So uh, if you're going to do a diorama, of course you don't need a stand, but I think I've decided to go ahead and do a... Uh, uh, a stand just for shelf display, so it, we'll, we'll be making one of those as well. So we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Let's uh, jump down to the bench and get to work on it. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at our instructions here. Now in step five is where the first PE shows up, and that is our weapons. So we got these PE parts, the gun shield. And, of course, the mounts for those are PE, uh, which we'll have to assemble. But first, uh, we need to put the machine guns together, and those are in plastic. Now, we haven't done those yet, so <laughs> time to do those. Um, looking through our parts here, now I've already cleaned these parts up uh, so that you don't have to watch me do that, all except for one little item. Uh, and that would be the ammo can holder that mounts to the side of our machine gun. Um, well, in reality, it would actually mount to the pintle that the machine gun's mounted on. Uh, but in this kit, uh, we will be attaching it to the side of the machine gun because that carrier for the machine gun is uh, molded in uh, to the gun itself. And as you can see, uh, let me get closer here. Um, there's a little bitty hole, square hole, where this notch is supposed to go, and that notch is considerably larger uh, than the locator hole is. So, um, and, and that comes from the molding process. So we're going to have to trim that around uh, that notch there, and um, I'm just going to use my sprue cutters for that uh, to knock it down uh, right there on that edge. Um, and then, of course, it's too long, so it's just supposed to be a little square tab there. Uh, and we'll sand that off, or file it in this case. Uh, I'll use my file and clean that up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and sand it some. And that should give us a, uh, a good positive locator there. Um, that way, uh, when we go to cement it up here, um, <laughs> it's uh, hopefully in the right place. So we do want to make sure that it is square to the body of the gun itself. Uh, you don't want it sagging and leaning down or something like that. So uh, making those little adjustments. And it's probably a good idea to let that set up just a little bit. Next up is the uh, actual ammo can. Uh, that goes uh, onto our ammo can holder, uh, and we do have to put the lid on it. So a little bit of to me extra thin, and we're ready to go. And these are really small ammo cans. <laughs> uh, so while we wait for our ammo can to uh, uh, dry there with the cement, then we'll go ahead and put that pencil assembly uh, onto the bottom of the weapon and this is a bit fiddly it doesn't really fit where it's supposed to fit uh, I'm having to actually put cement onto the can holder itself and kind of get this lined up this is not a working part so our, our machine guns are not going to swivel up and down so um, well that wouldn't be swivel that would be inclination and declination <laughs> so <laughs> at any rate uh, it's important that we get these straight because if we don't uh, then that's going to be a problem later on so now we can go ahead and put our ammo can into place here uh, just simply sets right into the mount and uh, or the can holder and uh, a little bit of cement there 
Then we can go ahead and put the grips on our machine gun. Uh, a little bit of me extra thin there for that. And as you can see, these are really small parts, so don't grip them too tightly with your tweezers, or they will uh, shoot off into some unknown region of your workshop and never to be seen again. So getting them lined up is a little bit of uh, finessing here to get it uh, to where it looks right. So with that done, uh, we can set these aside and let them dry. Now we do have two of those machine guns to, to make up. Next up is our PE parts. So we need to start cutting our PE out. And this PE comes with uh, this sticky clear uh, plastic on both sides of it. I just remove it from the front side. And then I like to use that piece of glass there to support uh, the PE fret. That way we're not bending uh, the PE and the parts. Uh, while we just simply cut through those uh, little fret connectors there. So we're going to have to peel these off. Now I do like to leave that sticky stuff on the back side. That way as we are cutting our PE parts, they're not flying off <laughs> and, and getting lost. And we don't have any extras, so we don't want to lose anything here. So we'll get uh, all of our mounts uh, off the PE fret. Now I do suggest that you only take the uh, the parts off that uh, you need to be working with uh, and then don't, don't try to cut everything off at the same time because if you do uh, and you lose something uh, before you're ready to, to actually start the assembly for that part then <laughs> you're just gonna be SOL there. So there are those little connection points that you do need to sand down uh, if you can get your blade up close to it uh, and get them snapped off, then you're in, you're in good shape. Uh, otherwise, you are going to have to sand it just a little bit. So when it comes to putting the pedestals together here for our machine guns, I'm going to take uh, some low tack. That's that light purple colored masking tape there. Uh, that's a low tack painter's tape. And I'm just going to use some different tape here to tape it down to my mat nice and flat sticky side up uh, that way it will hold our PE base for us and we're not going to have to chase this around the mat while we're trying to assemble this and there we go so we're to assemble these we're going to be using this medium uh, CA glue and this is that little candle trick where you put your CA glue on the wax uh, and it keeps the, the glue from drying out too fast for you. And it'll be usable for a longer period. So using a toothpick or cocktail stick, whichever you prefer, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start to put some CA glue into the first slot. And these uh, uprights are tabbed. Uh, there's a short tab, which is the one we're putting on right now. And uh, as you can see, I can manipulate it and get it uh, right into the slot that it needs to go in. And then we'll come back, add a little bit of CA glue here uh, for the second cross piece. Of course, getting it lined up is uh, <laughs> a little fiddly. Uh, and I do accidentally glue it to my finger, but that's okay. <laughs> I didn't lose any skin, so we're in good shape. Uh, these do slot together, and then, of course, you have to get it into the, uh, uh, the bottom base slot. And this is where that low-tack uh, masking tape really comes in handy because we will be able to peel this off later after it, uh, after it dries. So, sorry my hand was in the way there. I was having trouble getting it lined up. But we can come back in with our toothpick and uh, just kind of scrape away any excess because that uh, medium CA glue is kind of thick. So we're going to add some uh, CA glue here where the actual swivel mount is going to go. And uh, we're just going to slide it down in between uh, those cross pieces. And there we go. So that's one that's already built up and then we just have to build up the second one 
I probably should have started off center with the first one, but that would have gave me a little bit more room. But since I didn't, <laughs> I just found me a little spot next to it there. So that's both of them built up. And then we're just going to remove it from our cutting mat. Just peel it off very carefully. And now we can just fold our, uh, our tape over and we can remove the whole assembly. Now those slots, those locating slots in the base actually go all the way through. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, seepage of the uh, CA glue onto the bottom. So we're just going to lay those over on our mat and, and let those dry. So next up, uh, we need to go ahead and bend our gun shields into place here. Uh, and there is a uh, small diagram there. Uh, that uh, shows us the angle of the bend. Just want to make sure that I'm bending it in the right direction. So I'm matching that up with the uh, actual instructions. And then we can start our bend. And it's a very slight bend. It's easy to overbend. And you don't want to be overbending too much and bending back because you can break these. Now these uh, shields are uh, etched right on the bend line which makes it really easy to do so you could actually bend these with tweezers you don't really need the uh, photo etch bending pliers like I have there but that's what we're supposed to end up with of course we will we'll fit those later and we do have these really small angled paws here now these are the uh, spring-loaded uh, belt feed paws that goes on top of the ammo can. If our ammo can had been open, then that would press down on the actual ammo belt and keep the uh, uh, the ammo from jumping out of the can uh, while we're firing the weapon, which is a really nice touch. Uh, you don't usually see that even on 135th scale kits, so that's nice that they've included that, and we'll have to do that for both of our weapons. So when it comes time to locate our uh, actual mounts, we're just going to add the CA glue to the bottom of the base there. And as you can see, I have put some uh, Tamiya masking tape down on the front edge of that deck, which gives me a good idea of where these are located because it's not marked uh, on the... Uh, actual part of the deck there where these go so it you really want these these two mounts to be lined up with one another because when you look at it from the side if they're not it'll be pretty obvious so we just need to get these pressed down right where they need to go and with both of them in place there we can go ahead and remove our tape which gave us our uh, relief from the front edge there of the deck and that's what we end up with. Easy peasy. Not a problem. That looks good. Now our next PE part that we're going to work on is going to be these lifting brackets. And they do have a slight bend at the top of them there. Uh, and these are attached to the hull of the craft so that it can be hoisted out of the water. But we do have some uh, these little donut shaped <laughs> pieces here kind of look like little washers uh, but they are there to give thickness to the actual connection point that the uh, sling would be hooked to uh, to hoist these boats back on on board of the mother vessel so uh, a little bit of CA glue there and we just have to attach those and uh, there's one to either side just want to make sure that they're pressed down in their center of the hole and that's what they look like. So there are four of these, two of each um, kind of angle, I guess, is, is the word I'm looking for. Because you've got a front and a rear, uh, more or less. So we do need to attach these to the vessel. So a little bit of CA glue there on the back side. Now, lucky for us, uh, Trumpeter did put in a little scribe line there. I uh, hope you can see it right where these brackets go. So we will just line that up right on the side of the hull and press it into place. 
and uh, yeah, there it is. So that's one installed. So basically the rear one on the opposite side is exactly like this one that we just put on the front on this side and vice versa for the other two because they kind of angle in together. So those are easy to put on. So next up, we're going to look at these life preservers. As you can see, they kind of tried to do a, a it's kind of like a molding of the, the rope that goes around the edge there, but it looks, re looks really bad. Uh, I think the ba best thing to do here is going to be to just sand that off and make these life preservers nice and round, or as round as we can get them anyway. Uh, and we will add that detail back in later by um, um, using some thread. Uh, once we decide what color thread we're going to actually use, I'm thinking maybe a tan and a black binder type, which will look good uh, because these life preservers are supposed to be white and red, so that'll be nice. So we do have our mounts. Uh, for our life preservers to hang from and so trumpeter has these little bitty strips of pe for us to bend so what i've done is just sized up a uh, a drill bit here for the thickness that i want the uh the bend to be and we're just going to kind of curl that up you can start your curl by uh, pressing it into a soft medium, such as I'm using a, a large pink rubber eraser here, but and it works really good. So, um, and we're just checking our sizing here to make sure that the life preserver hooks onto it. So that's one done, and only got three others to do. So there is a square locator uh, molded into the uh, the cargo area here of our uh, LCM so a little bit of CA glue there and then we just need to put our hooks into place being careful to make sure that we line it up and get it square uh, that way it's not off at some really weird angle and with that one installed we only have three others to do and here we are with all four of them installed, and it's really nice that uh, Trumpeter did put uh, a little square locator there for, <laughs> for each one of those to go on to. Uh, that way we've got the alignment correct. The only other thing to do is to double check and make sure that our life preservers actually fit in them, and they do. We're in good shape. So that looks good. So next up we're going to work on this fire extinguisher. Uh, now I did drill a hole in the bottom of it and, and use CA glue to glue a, uh, a toothpick into place there so I can actually hold on to this rather small fire extinguisher. Now in the kit we have this tubing and as you can see it is very much oversized. So I'm going to replace that with uh, some lead wire. So this is lead wire used for making fishing, fishing lures, <laughs> if I can say that. Uh, and this is the 0 0.5 millimeter, which is the smallest that came in the assortment that I have on hand. So that's what we're going to use. So it's half millimeter. Uh, I am going to cut those little tabs or uh, nipples off for, uh, for the tubing, since we're not going to use that tubing. And we'll just CA glue the lead wire straight to the, uh, uh, to the fire extinguisher itself. So we start off, uh, and you could start off on either the, at the valve itself or on the uh, nozzle uh, of the fire extinguisher. Now, the, the ideal here was that I was going to let this set up, which I do, uh, once I attach it with the CA glue and then I could start bending it. But the problem I ran into is that the actual attachment point there is so small, it keeps breaking off on me. <laughs> so uh, uh, every time I put it on and uh, try my bends, because I, I want this hose to kind of look sort of natural, you know, 
uh, but uh, it does keep bending off or, or breaking off of the actual fire extinguisher. So we're just going to go ahead and freehand this and get that bend profile in uh, the way we want it to look. Kind of a big loop at the top because of the orientation of the nozzle. Um, so we'll just bend that around and kind of using the instructions as a reference because it does kind of show you what it's supposed to look like. And checking it with the uh, fire extinguisher there, checking the bends. We just need to line it up to where we need to cut the overall length there on the one side. And once I get that cut, um, we'll be able to attach the... Uh, the hose to our fire extinguisher. It is kind of fiddly, but I think it's going to look much better than uh, that oversized black tubing that they provided um, in the kit. Uh, now you can always use that, but I'm not sure that you'd have much more luck than I'm, <laughs> than I'm having with this lead wire. So uh, I think this is the first time I've used lead wire, so um, it it does give us a much better in scale look uh, than the tubing would. So there we are. That's, that's what we're after. And once we get this all painted up, it should look really good. So yeah, there we go. One fire extinguisher with one hose. So now let's take a look at the profile here from the side of our landing craft. And as you can see, Although because of our rudder arrangement there, uh, we have that kind of keel or double keel kind of projection coming down below the craft, uh, which is, means it's just not going to sit flat. So I have some woodworking equipment, so I went ahead and cut myself a, a, a little stand of sort, a display base uh, for our landing craft. It's eight and a half inches by, I think, three inches. Not that the measurements are all that important because the vessel is going to be uh, suspended above it. So this is uh, an assortment of uh, balsa wood, which we're going to be using to elevate the craft above the base. So I've thought of several different ways we could do this, but I've opted for something <laughs> kind of simple. Uh, which is in order to elevate it, maybe just a couple of slips or runners there, uh, which we'll attach to the base. And we just want the craft high enough that it's not sitting on the rudders. So I think that's going to work okay. So, of course, we're just going to stack up a couple of pieces either side just to get the look want to see exactly where we're at and uh, whether or not it needs to be higher uh, and I think uh, this is going to be okay uh, it should give us plenty of height that the rudders clear the the display base and uh, we can take and cut this down we don't need those tails uh, to the, towards the front and rear just the center actually needs to be supported anyway so it kind of looks like we'll be able to actually make both the left and right side uh, with uh, just two little strips there so I'm checking my measurement here where I plan to do it and basically we're just going to go a little bit forward and a little bit aft of the uh, weld lines there and that gives us about three inches and we can get two pieces out of uh, one little stack here. So that's good. So all we got to do now is glue these together. So I'm going to use this Elmer's uh, school glue, just that plain old white glue, which works really, really well with, uh, with balsa wood. Uh, very thin line of glue. You don't need much because we don't have much <laughs> surface area here to actually glue this up and we're just going to press this down together and I think it's a good idea to go ahead and clamp these so uh, we're going to clamp them down and of course when you add pressure uh, any excess glue that's there is going to squeeze out so I'm just using a, uh, uh, a piece of paper towel and some water 
to clean off all the squeeze out. Now, once that dries for us, and it doesn't take long, you can, about 20 minutes and you're ready to go. I have my small miter box here that I made a long time ago to help me keep and uh, make as straight a cut as possible. And we're just going to use our craft saw and trim the ends off here. Now, if you've ever dealt with balsa wood, you know that it does like to splinter and fray and have these fuzzy ends. So it's a good idea to, to sand those down. Now we're going to take and measure off our first three inches. And uh, if I can get the rulers, there we go. All right. And we just line up our mark and we can go ahead and cut this one. So these, these, these strips that we have glued together is long enough for the two sections that we actually need. So we'll cut the first one, we'll re-sand, and then of course we'll cut the next one as well. And I do have this uh, little desktop cleaner, which is a little vacuum cleaner. It's got brushes on the bottom and uh, a fan in it, and it really sucks up all that <laughs> uh, sawdust. So all we're doing here is setting and locating uh, exactly where we want these uh, supports. And we're just going to make a couple little pencil marks right on our base where uh, one corner is going to go. And then we will also mark down the side so that it's actually parallel uh, to the side of our base. Uh, we don't need those to be off at any kind of weird angle so with that marked we just want to check our location and if it's good we can go ahead and uh, glue them into place so with the glued into place there we go it's all ready for uh to accept the uh the actual vessel so next up uh Trumpeter has provided us with four of these um, landing obstacles, these beach obstacles that the Germans used uh, in Normandy. Uh, so you can build these up if you're going to do a diorama. And it's nice that uh, Trumpeter has already included these in the kit. And if you've seen the movie like The Longest Day or Saving Private Ryan, those should look pretty familiar. Okay, so we got all of our PE done, uh, the weapons mounts, those are taken care of. Now, I don't have the weapons on it yet, and, and the shields, <clears throat> I haven't put those on because uh, it's just going to be much easier to paint that uh, without that being on the uh, actual landing craft. Um, and we got our little hooks inside there, got those bent and uh, installed in our lifting brackets and, and all that. That looks really good. And we came up with a, uh, a solution for those really horrible looking life preservers. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll be building those up after we paint them, but I think using two different colors of thread for the for the ropes that goes around those is a much better idea than <laughs> than that horrible molding that trumpeter put on it there which we sanded off and also we got our little stand made uh now of course you don't have to have a router and all that stuff and, and make one of these which i did because i had that equipment but uh you can find a little piece of wood uh in the uh, arts and crafts section there at your local hobby store uh, they usually have something that would be suitable and uh, I just made some skids. Of course, you could always make up some sort of a uh, cradle or something uh, for the craft to sit on. But I decided just to go this route. It'd be a little simple. Something easy to do. So, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys. And I keep making these videos. And I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope that uh, today I earned your subscription. And uh, stick around for the finish of this. We should be... Pretty much, uh, we got painting and stuff to do, and that'll be part three is what we'll be doing uh, in that. We'll get everything painted and weathered. Shouldn't take too much. And, um, of course, fixing those life preservers. I'm kind of <laughs> enthusiastic over that. Uh, I think that'll be a nice detail. Uh, so, uh, don't forget to leave a comment. And if you have any questions, please just ask me anything you want, and I'll give you the best advice I can uh, if you... If you have something that maybe I didn't explain, uh, or if you have a question about something else, it's fine. Uh, I answer everybody. 
So uh, with that, guys, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.